some people here. I'll introduce you, and then it's all yours. Uh, as mentioned, people Excellent. can ask questions on the way through by raising their hand. Hello, everyone. My name is Matt Cameron, and I help people connect with digital marketing. Today, we're going to hear from Xavier about his, um, he's written it on the screen here, his strategies for effective marketing and cloud project team. And I guess management, how to build trust and drive success. But this is just another one of our transferable skills session where we talk about the soft skills that need to, that are really helpful and make a big difference in doing um, marketing cloud or general marketing in general. Um, Xavier's a project manager, so we not hear it from a dev side, we're hearing it from our stakeholder side today. So it should be really interesting. As we go through, I'll open up microphones. Anyone can talk, but please wait until um, Xavier um, just acknowledges you after you've raised your hand um, for a question. And we'll do Q&A at the end. I'm sure that'll be interesting too. Xavier, it is all yours. Excellent. Thank you, Matt. Uh, thank you, uh, Lakshmi, as well, for the opportunity to, um, to have this, uh, uh, this presentation today. Very, very pleased to, uh, to be here. And uh, yeah, I've got for you um, uh, a nice presentation uh, that, that, that was really a lot of fun for me to prepare this, uh, this presentation to, uh, to, to wrap up um, a few years of experience in a presentation and to give you, give you some um, good recommendation and hints on how to approach uh, project management and how to build trust. Uh, with your team when you are implementing Marketing Cloud or doing a project with Marketing Cloud. So let's jump to, uh, to the next slide. So, so my name is uh, Xavier Mlenek. I'm, uh, I'm actually French and, uh, and Canadian. I was born in France, but uh, um, in uh, 2005, I moved to, uh, in 2005, sorry, I moved to, uh, to Canada. And I stayed there for 17 years, and I just came back to Europe actually two years ago. So almost all my career, I spent it in Canada. This is where I became a Salesforce consultant. I, I worked, um, I've been working on Salesforce projects since uh, 2017. And uh, my role was really around project management, practice lead for, for the marketing cloud practice. Uh, I also did a lot of pre-sales. So basically, I was always the guy being in front of the customer, trying to manage the expectation, trying to set up the project, and, um, and also doing the link between the customers and also, um, and, uh, and also the development team. Uh, because I worked, uh, I've been working since 2017 for uh, Salesforce Consulting uh, Partners. So, like I said, um, I worked in, uh, in, two, in two continents, uh, se uh, seven, con uh, seven countries. Um, I also um, try to spend a lot of time learning new things, um, having new Salesforce certification. Uh, when I do, I really try not to only to look at the objective of getting the certification, but also trying to learn new things along the way. Um, it's, it's good to have the certification. You can put it on LinkedIn. Uh, that really helps you with your career. But I think it's also an opportunity to learn new, uh, new things. And when I do, I, I sometimes spend a little bit more time than, than, than you need on certain subjects just, to, uh, just because sometimes certain, uh, uh, certain subjects might help you in, in a project down the road. Um, the way I work with people, it's I really like to work in team. It's super important for, for me. Uh, when I try to promote the, the, this event, I also uh, ping in my uh, LinkedIn post uh, some of the um, great colleagues that I had the chance to, to work with. And uh, because of them, you know, they really helped me to... Uh, to, to become a, a better project manager, a better marketing cloud uh, consultant. So I really, again, wants to, want to, uh, to thank them for, for, for this and for, for their collaboration. Uh, just a little bit about me personally. I'm a, I'm a real... Um, 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 I'm a real fan of everything outdoor. I'm a real fan of the nature. It's super important for me to be in the nature and to have fun with my family 
while we are uh, we are enjoying the, the nature. Uh, for the record, you might think that this picture was taken in Canada and actually not. It's it's in France. So you see, you you don't necessarily have only the Eiffel Tower in, in France. You can have something that looks like uh, Canada. All right. So next uh, next slide. Next slide. We're gonna. Um, this is what. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, today. Those are the, the things, the important steps of a project. And really what I want to, to tell you with these slides before I go a little bit deeper in each section, uh, project management for Marketing Cloud, it's not only about project delivery. A lot of things happen before and a lot of things happen after the project. Um, and it's important throughout all these steps to maintain a steady stream of communication among your team and also with the with the customers, but that, that has to be well organized, and that's something that you have to organize even before the even before the the, the project starts. Even the, the the handover, it's something super important because you will see you probably all all have seen that at the end of the project, the customer knows that you might go going to go away. So he's a little bit, uh, is a little bit stressed out and um, some, some new requests might come up as you are, you're going towards the end of the project. But this is, this is normal and you need to, you need to take this um, uh, in advance. You need to, uh, to, um, to plan this ahead uh, in order to manage all those requests throughout, throughout the project. So I'm going to give you some uh, some concrete example on the on the, all those uh, those things. And really, this is something that you you know even right now I'm doing some project and uh, and I've learned new things. You always uh, you always learning new, uh, new new things. So um, yeah, so let's uh, let's go to the next step. So the the next step is the project preparation. Project preparation, it involves sometimes, uh, in my case, I've always tried to, to do this very thoroughly, um, project estimates. And that, that might be sometimes extremely challenging. And I know that not necessarily all developers or marketing cloud consultants like to, to, to do this. Personally, I kind of like it. This is really something that I enjoy doing. Um, but I would say what, what's important here is um, Try to be granular, as granular as uh, as you can when you're doing the the, the 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 estimates. But what's important here to um, to remember is the fact: don't necessarily only factor uh, factor in the um, the time it takes to develop or to configure the fe the, the, the feature, because uh, what you need before is probably sometimes for a workshop. And before a workshop, you need preparation. So you, you need to, uh, to factor the, this in. And after the workshop, you need also some time to digest the information and probably to, uh, to, uh, to send an email back. So all those times needs to be planned uh, before you, you work. So there is the workshop. There is the time to configure the, the, the features, to develop the, uh, an integration, for, for example. But there is also the, the time to do QA and UAT. And those are different things. Um, you need some time to do your own testing and you need some time to, uh, to do the testing with the, with the customer. That's, the, that's uh, super important. And on top of that, you need time for project management and communication. The way I, I do it, I try to plan this out around the, the, the agile ceremonies. So you might have stand up um, a couple of times during the week. You might have uh, also weekly meeting with the with the customers. You need to to factor this in. You need sometimes to prepare to to prep for we, um, a weekly meet, meeting to do follow ups, and you need to also to count the number of people who will be present uh, during the, these meetings. All those details needs to be in your in your project estimates, and. Um, Again, for each line like this, I'm going to try to also remember, you know, what's what's important for the trust with with your team. Um, it's it's difficult sometimes to get the opinion of your your teammate, especially when you have good developers 
or good marketing cloud consultant because they might be busy, but but at least um, try to, to to get a little bit of uh, of the of uh, of their feedback, especially on the, of this on the things that you don't know, because when I've uh, I've been doing this for a while, and uh, a bunch of numbers that that you have here, those are numbers actually um, that that I know from uh, from past projects. So uh, when I'm doing a new project, there is probably 80 percent of all the numbers that you have on an estimate spreadsheet like this that I'm super confident with. And sometimes there are a little bit of things that are a little bit new and I will need the, the feedback of my team, the development team to, uh, to estimate this. So basically I just bother them with the new thing. The rest, everybody knows, every, everybody trusts the numbers because I'm just reusing the numbers um, that, uh, the, the estimate that we had from past from, from past, past project and and we just constantly keep of of um, of, uh, of updating those uh, those numbers. All right, so let's go to uh, to the next slide. So right now, next uh, project phase, we did the, the project estimate and uh, the customer agrees. We we have a project and we start the project with the customer. This is also for me a super important um, moment with the uh, with the with the with the customer, um, and um, and I, what I would say it's really the the perfect time to set the expectation right with the with the customers on a lot of things. Of course, in pre-sales you you have to start doing this as well, but here you have a lot of aspect to discuss with your customers, with the different stakeholders, um, and, uh, and you need to, um, to, to make things, a lot of things very clear on role and responsibilities, on roles and responsibilities with a new team, who's doing what, but also on the customer side, whether it's, um, you know, it's a customer from a uh, consulting, uh, consulting firm or an internal customer. They have to know what, what will be their part as well. When they will have to bring you assets, for example, images, data for, for the journey. They will have to, to know this. It's important to put all of this also in a timeline. So they, they know exactly who will be involved and when they will be involved. Then the, 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 the second point is the, the scope of the project. Be extremely, be crystal clear with, the, with this. Try to um, give numbers. For example, uh, numbers of integration, what type of, um, of integration you, 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 you're going to do. And um, if you're going to say, OK, we, we do email templates, put the number on it and put how many content block you will have in, the, uh, in, the, in, the, in that template. That's extremely important because sometimes people might think, oh, normal uh, email is five and for others it's 15. So, and that, uh, that will have a huge impact on, the, on, the, on your project. Um, co concerning assumptions, it's, it's a way for me to say, scope and assumptions, it's a way for me to say what's in and what's out, inclusion, exclusion. It's a little bit more political, um, uh, nicer way uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, to say it. Uh, because it's important to, to say, okay, what's going to be included, like I said, like, like I, ex, um, I explained, but also what's not excluded. And for me, it's an assumption. So basically what I'm saying here, for example, I take for granted, I take the assumption that all your data comes from, uh, from the Marketing Cloud Connect. All your, your data comes from the standard connection, meaning I don't have uh, any point-to-point -point integration to, uh, to prepare. That's, that's for me a way, a, politi um, a politically uh, correct way to say uh, the point-to-point -point integration is not part of the, of the project. Communications is, um, is also something super, super important to uh, clarify at this moment of the project because um, sometimes the consultant, the developers might be overwhelmed with customer requests during the project. And as a project manager, if you want to build trust with your team, you need to channel all the requests through you. And, uh, and the customer knows, because, because of the timeline, they know when we're going to work on the different aspect of the project. 
they will know when to ask the questions and, and they know that all the questions will have to, to go through you and uh, they will know when they will have the opportunity to, to talk to such and such specialists uh, throughout, the, throughout the, the project. This is also something, so, something important because sometimes, uh, you know, when uh, doing a project, some customers or some stakeholders might go directly to your developers and, and try to, to get new features or to get, to get uh, new requirements done. And you're not even aware of it as a project manager. So that's why all those new requests have to come through you. And if there is something uh, like this that happens, because they always do, the, um, the development team uh, should actually let the, the project manager know so they can handle this kind of request. If you have any question, guys, don't hesitate. Huh? I can stop. Uh, yes, we're gonna. I'm gonna share the the presentation afterward. So, uh, but if you stop here, I've got a question. Uh, go ahead. Oh, when you were talking about the estimates for the project, and you said that yeah. you would be basing it on previous projects, what did yeah. you do at the very start when it was like your first, second, third project really early in? Would you try to make an estimate yeah. and check it with your peers, or how did you, how did you get an accurate estimate at that point? Yeah, uh, at the very beginning when we started, there was no peer. Uh, there was really not a lot of people um, around or people that I knew within the marketing cloud space. This this is different right now. I always have some some other people in other country that I can uh, that I can ask. Uh, but but sometimes in, it it happens all the time, Brent, Brent with with new project. How do you estimate a project for a new cloud? Something that's never been done. So what I, what I do, I try to, um, um, to look at the Salesforce documentation, to build something on a, on a test instance, to see how much time it takes to, uh, to do it. Um, when, when, I do this, I when I do this, I try to be as much out, out of the box as possible. I always do the, uh, the, the, the things, the most common use case, and um, I'm not trying to estimate something that, that might be a little bit different from the, the normal use cases. And uh, so I'm doing just a, just a, a first test uh, uh, on, a, on an instance, see how much time it takes, uh, try to then to factor in um, how much time it takes to, uh, to get the requirements for a workshop, uh, the QA, UAT, um, what I forget to, to mention in UAT, what I like to do also is to um, try to factor in, uh, try to uh, factor in how much time I am, um, I I will um, need to uh, to build the, the test scenarios. Also, this is something that I took into consideration, and um, and that's it. So this is how I do for the first time, and and then. Um, then trying to be granular with all the, the, the tasks of the project. And, the, and then after the project, you compare it. You, you, uh, you log your time for the different um, tasks and you check, okay, here I was a little bit, okay, uh, a little bit too much. Or here that there wasn't not enough and I adjust it. That's, that's how I do it. Not, it's not, you know, a perfect solution. It's you know, just something that you uh that you ad adjust with the with the time thank you that makes, makes sense. sense yeah i'll put my hand up if i can thank you i think you're going to talk about trust next so whilst you're talking about estimates i might i've got a couple of questions um okay. and a couple of observations too i think it's so important what you said about the before and after time and all the commercials and all the milestones and all that sort of yeah. stuff um just a question so say a job or a project was going to cost 100 hours how many what percentage would you put on it for project management would you say i'm going to be on that project for 20 percent of the time 50 percent of the time 100 what would be your um for me it's be it depends depends on the project it depends on the project but i have a range between 20 and uh, 30 or 35 something like this that's my range but i don't calculate like this. I don't calculate it. Um, I always check at the end if I'm uh, within that range. But the way the way I do it is, like I said before, I try to 
uh, factor in how many people you have in the team, the length of the project. Um, and based on this, you know if you're going to have to do a daily, uh, weekly, and those kind of things. And I arrange all the PMing around that task. On top of the ceremonies, I also try to factor in the, the communication with the, with the customers. I you normally, I would say, minimum for a small project, let's say just a pilot project, for example, minimum two emails per week. And let me tell you, an email for me, uh, I may, maybe I'm, I'm wrong, but for me, it, even when I do it in my own language, in French, it takes 30 minutes to write a, a good email. Oh, no. A good email, very solo, with the next step, try to be politically correct, those kind of things. It takes time. I know about and, that. Uh, and at least, I know yeah, about that. Um, so I've, I've had that conversation with so many colleagues. Um, you get the email, and why can't you answer it quickly? And you might be in a workshop with another technical person, architect or whatever. Yes. And you, you burn a couple of hours, three or four hours, but you've got to answer them correctly because there's always a motive. There's always a reason why you got that question in the first place. Something that I'm getting an impression with, um, and especially that spreadsheet, that this is a formula for pretty standard campaigns. Like this is a campaign with you're setting up journeys or you're setting up some pretty standard campaigns. This isn't a complex project, is it? I, this is pretty standard stuff because um, I'm sort of figuring you, you, it doesn't quite often. I know that I'll follow a statement of work and then you'll have workshops to refine user stories and technical stories. And um, then you'll yeah. start solutioning. Like, there's a whole process that I haven't heard here. So I'm guessing this is more for straightforward work, what you're presenting at the moment. Uh, no, actually, this is this is actually just uh, what you're seeing here is just a screenshot. It's just part of the screenshot. Yeah. Uh, uh, what you, you you're seeing here in the in the in the blocks at the top of the the spreadsheet here, those are this is actually for project in your implementation for marketing cloud in implementation. And all the blocks that you have here, you have the kickoff, the 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 email studio configuration, the IP warm up. Um, here you have a little bit of uh, training already at Studio. You have Einstein fe features and uh, and journey, and uh, and actually this is the this spreadsheet is what much longer than what you see here. And uh, and, uh, and as you said, for each block here, you have some use case refinement with workshop and um, yeah, for each each of the blocks that you have here. I, so, I, I, so basically. Yeah, I, I, I might agree to disagree, but I think um, it's really important to get ownership from people that are in the project to get them across the estimates. So I, if I was in, I'm, I said I'm just agreeing, not to agree, but I think it's more it's it's important also to be reaching into the team for some numbers as well. Um, especially it helps create a sense of what's happening and highlights anything that might need to be worked out. You can always do top down, bottom up estimates where you've got to work out you know what it's going to take and you you present it back to the team you find out what they think it's going to take and you work out what the, the wiggle room is what where the issues are where the questions that need to be asked because quite often complexity is in the unknown so um yeah of course i always feel it's so important to be sharing this process with the team even if you've got a you know what it's going to be they still need to own it um yeah it's just a, just just part of my um, process. Well, it's all just sharing that. Um, that's why I was asking about the complexity. Cool. So, they are just my comments, my questions, my thoughts. Yeah, but but the the unknown, I'm trying as much as possible to 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 plan it. Uh, I, that's why I said before the project that was super important in pre sales to, to try to get as much as possible of of the unknown. But there are, there are things that sometimes just, just, just come up. Like for, for the last project that I'm working on right now, um, there is something that I didn't, that we didn't see in pre-sales was the fact that the, the company has very, very strict uh, security measure. And when we did the, the, actually the project kickoff, we just realized, okay, the timeline doesn't work because we have so much security constraint that we have to change the, uh, we have to change it. The scope is not very, uh, very complex, but because of the security measure, we had to uh, realign uh, everything. Um, 
and if really you have another unknown, uh, something, uh, you know, uh, something that you never seen, and th that's, you know, uh, for example, in a project, uh, I was doing um, Einstein recommendation implementation. That was back in 2020 or in 2029, I don't, I don't remember, but that was just before Salesforce retired the old content builder. And the old content builder didn't work uh, uh, with the Einstein recommendation. And that's something, and let me tell you, I really worked super hard on that project in pre-sales. And that's something that I couldn't actually see. And nobody could tell me because nobody knew at the customer that they were on the old uh, content builder. And when we opened the, uh, when we opened the hood, then we saw, oh shoot, the, uh, the all the emails are, are in the, the wrong the, the wrong version. We have to migrate all the emails to the new one. And that was a huge instance. There was an instance with 17 business units, with probably 20 emails or something like this per business unit. That was massive. And basically, what what we did, we had no other choice than than doing another side project, uh, especially for for that uh, for for that that part. Uh, so, yeah, so my techniques is really like trying to be granular as much as I can, but of course, sometimes, you know, it cannot be done. And, but, uh, you know, since I'm extremely thorough and I try to list all the tasks, then I can say, you see, there is, it's very clear what you just ask is not part of the scope. Uh, we, we might, we just, if we want to, um, uh, deliver the project, we need to, to do this probably on the side. So that's that's the thing. That's my way of, of doing it, but uh, it's not perfect. Huh? It's just something that I keep on uh, refining every day. Oh, thanks for sharing. All right. Um, all right. Uh, so, so yeah, so let's go to uh, to the next slides. And you know, uh, right now we are really in the, the heart of the project in the in the delivery. And I had the chance to work on different types of project and you could see that the dynamic is really different. And I did a lot of implementation. So first time implementation, even like um, migration from other, uh, from other platforms, MailChimp of course, but from Adobe as well. So, so this, this, this can be uh, challenging and you have a lot of things to, to take into consideration when you're doing this type of project, but then you have another type of project that is more and more common right now, where a little bit more people are, have marketing cloud and not necessarily every company know how to use it. Sometimes they outsource all the campaign management to a consulting, uh, to a consulting firm. Or sometimes you have just a team within a company just dedicated for, for campaigns and that for me, I think it's the different ball game. Also, the dynamic of the project is really it's really different. You're managing very um, uh, very differently. So, uh, for the first time implementation, the things to uh, to consider um, is for me, we in marketing cloud, it's not all about. Uh, yes, Bilal, you uh, you have a question. Yeah. So I was asking like uh, how you give. Uh... Uh, like the timeline to different uh, uh, things like the emails journeys and like automation how you assign the times so for example some may developer give uh, take one hour and some take half an hour uh, like you take uh, like uh, maybe like 15 minutes so how you decide those hours well like like i said be, uh, before for uh, um, i have my benchmark on uh, on projects on past projects for if you take the email uh, configuration um, uh, the email studio configuration. I have my benchmarks on past projects, but what I do as well, I take uh, multiplicators in in in, um, in consideration. Multiplicators might be, for example, the number of business units um, for the. If you take the the, the case of the um, uh, the, the email studio. Con uh, um, the email studio uh, configurations, uh, the the number of domain that that you need to uh, to configure, uh, those kind of things. Though, so it's not just um, uh, a simple lines 
for for each part of the project that I'm trying to estimate, uh, you know, based on the volume of work and the number of items that we have to deliver, I might apply some uh, some multiplicators. But uh, I always do it with the um, actually the with the the history of uh, project estimates that that I have. So so do you maintain like a sheet or something uh, where you write all the yeah previous project uh, times yeah and if you yeah. can share that one with us also like uh, how so that we can refer to, for that also yeah uh, after the project we always yeah. do a retro a retrospection mm -hmm. and uh, and we uh, and since we uh, and that's why also during the project it's very important to to be um very granular when you log in your time and to log your time you know uh, with the same task that, that you have uh, in, the, um, uh, in the project estimates. So basically, uh, in the past, I was doing my estimates on the, um, on the tool, uh, and, and that was the same tool that I was used afterwards for project management. So actually, I was doing my estimates straight up in the, uh, in the estimate tool. And, uh, and that, so that's why people can lock time and then, then we can see, oh, specifically on that ta on that task, that was too high, or oh, no, you give us too much time. Sometimes it happens, huh? Sometimes it happens. It's not always uh, uh, not enough time. Matt, you have a question? Oh, we were I, think, I think Lakshmi might have had a hand up first, but I'll go, seeing you asked me. Um, then I'll lower my hand in a tick. Um, I think the calculators that you're talking about might be commercial in confidence because um, they're obviously your, uh, your PI that you've developed over time. I'm not quite sure if you could share them. Is that right? Um, I think there's a question there. If you could share your calculations, how you do the calculations, that'd be your intellectual property, wouldn't they? Your IP. I can share some tips. I can okay. share some. I can share. I can share some uh, some, some tips. And, and you mentioned before about the retro, um, that's so important. I was going to ask, is yeah. it always the same team that you're working with? Like, have you got the same team that you're, you're generally doing jobs with? Uh, yes, because in, right now I'm a, I'm a practice lead. So yeah, no, no. Oh, that's cool. Uh, so this is making more sense to me because you you know the people yeah. that you're working with. You, you're, you're doing the retros. You've got an, estimate. Yes. It's an established way of working um, and everyone acknowledges what efforts taken to get the stuff done so that yes it's, it's, it, but I, I was thinking I'll, I'll sort of come back to that engaging people but you, you're doing it more not so much on every project but more over time so I get it now I really do get it cool yeah but yeah I'm sorry dropping. I'm sorry about this <laughs> sometimes it you're, drops you're, slowly you're right. me. And, um, because, because it depends on the on the sometimes you have different delivery teams uh, that might change when you're working for big consulting firms uh, sometimes you have a team in India, sometimes you have a team in Europe and a team in, in, in America and, and you don't necessarily know uh, the team uh, the team in advance. Uh, but um, I, I worked in those configurations and what I tend to do is to, to show them actually what I have uh, straight from the, uh, from the beginning. So they know, uh, and, and again, you know, like this presentation is, is about how to build trust. Um, and I think when you're doing this kind of retrospective, like, Okay, uh, they trust you because they know, they hear, they, they can share your, uh, their feedback and you're going to listen to them. And they, okay, oh, that's cool. Um, and even usually the, the reaction that I have with my spreadsheet is, oh, it's really detailed. And normally developers and configurators and con con consultants, they, they kind of like that. Yeah, no, you're going, to, uh, you're going so, with the prescriptive way of doing things with a, a very, here's how, we're going to manage it. Does it work for you? Comments? Um, yes. It, it, like an internal team sign off on that. Okay, let's get going with the project. So I get that way of doing the engagement. I guess um, I was thinking about it from a different way before, and that's why I was asking those sorts of questions. But I really do get what you're doing now. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, sorry, like let me. I thought that you just forgot your 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 hands, but I think uh, no, you you do have a question. I do have a sorry, question. I'm sorry. No, no, no problem at all. When when you need to work with different teams, right? And CRM would be the immediate prior team for marketing cloud. Am I correct, right? Most of the times we will Is get it? the SF entries, right? I mean, when you define journeys or configure things. Yes. Okay. Not, 
more and more yes yeah more that, more, yes. but 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 most probably that would be one of the key uh team with which we need to have transparent or you know regular communications right how do we achieve that kind of you know needed or necessary communication at what stage of project is it just before the production go live or is, is it just during the go live issues after you know after going live or starting from the project starting you know uh, where do you get that kind of balance between various teams um not sure i understand your question so basically we have you have various teams and um my question is so how can... how do we make sure we have enough communication between the teams oh. which are feeding marketing cloud environment yeah right so so it's really uh so um it's really throughout uh, throughout the, the project. When I even when uh, I start the project in project preparation, here uh, usually I have an internal meeting. This is something that I fact. By the way, this is also something that I factor in in my estimate. The internal al alignment. Uh, just to just to uh, I'm gonna show the timeline and the scope from a different point of view, from an internal from a project point of view. And I'm gonna share the role and responsibilities. Okay, we have uh, this person in charge of the data model, this person in charge of the, the development of the integration, this person uh, in charge of everything UX, UI. And everybody, that's what I meant with everybody knows their, 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 their part, their responsibilities. And I really, we go deeper into the, uh into the timeline probably a little bit deeper that we would go with the customer and what we give also at this moment and the, um the consultant i always hungry for this kind of things um give context how is the customers what's your feel uh do they know marketing cloud are they good with email marketing or are they totally green with email marketing those kind of things that's that's important to uh to have but that that's super important because that really puts you on the, the right step for the for the project. So what that's one thing. And then, then it's a constant communication. So the daily, it's it's important. The daily, everybody, you know, it's just a scrum. So you just say, okay, what I did today, what's my roadblock, and then what I'm gonna do uh, next for at the different phase. Throughout the, the, the project, um, different people might intervene. A different step of the project. So, for example, at the beginning, you might have all the people in charge of the of the data model. A little bit later, uh, the people in charge of UX, UI, those kind of things. So, it, it it depends. This is and this is how you get doing the scrums and the the dailies. Uh, this is how you get also a lot of um, unknowns, things that you didn't have anticipated, and. Um, uh, and that's it. And, that, and afterward, like uh, like I said, I'm doing a, a, a ritual. So it's really throughout the, the project. At, at the beginning, I'm trying to do a lot. And then then a little bit throughout the project. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Bilal, you have a, you had another question? Yeah, yeah. So I just want to ask, like, uh, if it, if after the pre-sales, uh, like, you get some requirement, like, uh, maybe your customer asking to integrate a custom activity, and you didn't know, like, uh, how many hours it will take, because, uh, like, the custom activity you, uh, because you never implement before. So how how you give the estimate for that time? And one more question, like, and someone, like, uh, suppose a case where uh, your teammate left after, uh, like, the project start. So how you like uh, basically communicate with that, uh, like to the your client and uh, like how you handle okay. that? Yeah, uh, that happened to me. That happened to me already. So concerning your first question, the custom, uh, the, the custom activity, uh, when I see those kind of things in pre-sales, I try to be very cautious. Um, like I said, you, you've seen, I'm, I'm, um, I'm a project manager and I don't come from uh, a development background, but I'm super interested, uh, in, interested in, in it. That's why, you know, I'm here today. It's a um, uh, marketing cloud developer group and I'm, and I'm here and I'm, I'm super interested in knowing those, those kind of things. So when I see that, I always try to 
to, to, to learn how technically those kind of things like custom activities with journey builder can be feasible. Uh, but really, if I see um, that this is something that I never done and I have a lot of things that I'm not sure of, I will involve a developer in the, in the presets. And that usually, um, and, and sometimes you don't have the luxury huh, of time for, for, for doing this. But since I, I have all these estimates ready, I'm, I'm for the rest, uh, for 80% uh, of the project, I'm super confident with, so I don't involve any, anybody. And, any, and because of the ritual, any, everybody within the team knows that that can be trusted. But there is always a part then, uh, that, is, that is new. And this is where I try to, uh, to involve uh, someone technical just to, to back me up in the, uh, in the, in, in the estimates. Um, and try, and when we do this, is really trying to understand where the, not, not necessarily just have a look at the technical things, but also at the use case. And, and also trying to involve sometimes also um, digital marketing experts because sometimes the customer come to you and they want to do that thing. It's super technical. When you think about it, yes, it can be done. But when, when you, you look at it from a marketing standpoint, it doesn't make any sense. So, and probably there is a better way and simpler way to do things. So, um, does it uh, answer your, 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 your first yeah. question, Bilal? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and again, this is just my experience. I, yeah. I'm not, and you know, I'm, I'm, here, I'm here with you today to, to learn also new things and you keep on learning new things every day. Concerning, so your, your second question was, basically you're starting a project and one of your teammates, just, just go, right? Just, just leave the project. Yeah, yeah. You, you give me some task, you assign some, like you were thinking, uh, I will give them this, this task and then uh, between the project, it will left. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's... Xavier, that's, is it okay if I, if I add one thing? Yeah. Uh, oh, Bilal, of course. Yeah, uh, Bilal, actually, your questions are too granular, too personal, you know, uh, to your scenarios, right? But just one thing I want to add is whether you need to convey that you don't know or you may not be sure right we just need to have that wider open eye for different sources of information and it's just convincing or communicating in the right way so that the other person understand what your situation is right it's it's always okay to say no when you're not sure rather than saying okay i will do in one day two day and then you will end up with nothing right so just make sure we do the positive or progressive conversations rather than subjecting us to the situation or making us responsible for the scenario, right? And if you are not sure, the first immediate person would be your supervisor or uh -huh. your team leader. And, the, and the, that, 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 is, that is a very good point, uh, what, what you just made. And, and I forgot that, and I should have said that. Um, yes, it's always, it's exact, it is acceptable to say no. And sometimes it's a safer way to say no. This is, this is not possible or we never done that. Or, or sometimes what I did also, I just, for, for certain part of the project, there was where a lot of unknowns uh, where, uh, was, was about around, uh, was around the project. Then, then you probably need to, to, to say, okay, we probably need a, a POC, a proof of concept just for that part because we never do, had done it. Uh, I'm not going to go, uh, if you are in fixed cost, fixed, uh, fixed cost mode, I'm not going to go fixed cost about that part. That's going to be a proof of concept or that is going to be time, time and, and material. This is, this is uh, just to keep on answering your first question about how you deal with stuff that you never done. That, that, can, be, uh, that can be a way to do it. And sometimes say no also. Uh, that's that's probably a safer way. And you can say it very politely, but uh, if it's if it's not so possible, then then it needs to be uh, expressed. And concerning gonna, your um, sorry, yeah. I was going to say everything's an opportunity. If the client asks for something, then we can look into that. <laughs> but like you say, no, it's okay. But everything if they're asking, then 
and take it to your PM and, and work through it. I think something else that's sort of missing there is just honest comms, and I think that's the value of having a PM. It's yeah. between the dev and the it's the internal and the external. You've got your PM managing what goes on those honest comms. And the PM can have that really genuine good conversation. So if somebody drops off the team, um, the PM can reach out and say, look, we've lost one of our key people. Yeah. We need to push this into the next sprint or whatever. Um, provided you're having good comms, you can shuffle sprints around. You can reorder priorities. Uh, but if you're not having ominous comms, then that's why it's important to go through your PM or at least talk to your PM about what the customer's asking. Even if you go back to them directly, your PM's got to be a part of that conversation. Um, yeah, it's just that having not the expectations got to be right. Um, as soon as you break expectations and you don't deliver, then you lose trust. Not sorry, I'm just babbling on. But um, no, no, no. But you're, you're yeah. totally right. You're totally right. Uh, for me, that was uh, that was actually a given. Being transparent and honest and precise in your communications is uh, is super important. Uh, always um, because for, for me, it's it's something that. You know, being transparent, it's really who I am. And sometimes, sometimes uh, people say that I'm a little bit too transparent. Um, I'm really an open book. You can read my mind uh, very easily. But no, it's, it's, it's crucial. It's crucial to be very transparent, very honest, um, where it can be done, how it can be done. And, uh, and, and usually, um, you, you see, it's very granular uh, the way I do, do estimates. But I'm, I tend to, to give some details to the customers. Not, not too much, not to over, overwhelm them, but, uh, but just, just, the, just enough so they can see that we handle the details um, and, um, and we, we sort of all of them and it's, it's, it's all taken care of. Yeah, and one more, one more thing to mention uh, to Bilal. I'm not trying to distract your questions or deviate your conversations, but I'm just letting you know that, you know, uh, when, when we ask Matt, he may have his own, uh, you know, methodologies to sort out a problem. And we ask Xavier, depending on their experience levels, you know, our problems by like beginners problems will be very lesser intensive for the, you know, higher level or high experienced people. So make sure you have that wider, you know, awareness or try to make sure that, you know, you enable or empower your teammates or your supervisors that what your actual situation is that always helps rather than putting ourselves into you know a problem or there is a saying called don't burn your bridges don't say something very fancy at the start and then don't end up with nothing uh, i'm not against to your questions i'm just trying to help you <laughs> yeah understand yeah thanks uh, just um, uh, concerning your second question Bilai, i'm gonna go uh, quickly because there we, we have only 10 minutes left what i would say also it's super important within your team to prevent the fact that people might go within your team, but people might go because they leave your company, because they are sick, because a lot of reason. Try to, when you prepare your team, try, and that's super difficult sometimes, try to uh, not to have a single point of failure. Try not to have a bottleneck, someone that has all the knowledge and that if this person goes, then then you're in big trouble. Try always to, uh, to to um, define and find those, those, those person within your team and trying to, to think of backup if, uh, if something uh, and something uh, comes up. Uh, and that's that's key sometimes. Sometimes a tech lead on, on a big project, uh, it's very hard to find in this industry, but uh, trying to, to come up for backup, uh, probably not with only one person, with two person maybe, but trying to, to have backup if something goes, uh, goes south. Um, just just uh, quickly on the, on this, I'm gonna I'm gonna speed up a little bit. Um, those are the, the, the things to uh, to take into consideration for an implementation. So what I was also saying um, is the fact that marketing cloud is not all about technical stuff. We know we are in a developer group, but we need also to work with people in marketing, uh, digital marketing, UX UI, those kind of things. Because like I said uh, sometimes. Yes, you can do super advanced and technical stuff, but sometimes from a marketing standpoint, it doesn't make any sense. And we need to work with those people as well to make sure that uh, from a strategic 
marketing or tactical standpoint, it, it will uh, give, uh, it will bring success. IP warm up, super, super important. This is, and this is, uh, this is a moment where you can say no. If a customer is sending more than 250,000 emails um, a month and they say, I don't want an IP warm up, honestly, I, I, I be tempted to, to say no, you, you really, uh, you really need it. Uh, things to consider also when you're doing a migration is the double run. Double run meaning sometimes uh, at the end of, of the project when your marketing cloud is on, you for certain regulations for certain uh, in certain countries, um, your the, the last email that you sent, um, they can be um, people can click on the unsubscribe button probably a few months after they are they are being sent. So that means that you probably are uh, running marketing cloud and another systems at the same time. And you need to transfer also all your emails and all your, 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 your campaigns time after time. Content management is always something super, uh, super tricky um, and, to, uh, and as well as uh, data migration. Uh, data, uh, data migration, I just mentioned that. Then the other type of the project, um, it's not necessarily that you have a less time and it's uh, more complex. But the dynamic is very different. Um, you, you don't necessarily have time to think of things like what is the right data model, and you don't have that much time for workshop, those kind of things, when you're doing just campaign, campaign delivery. But you have to be very extremely clear, even more than for an implementation, on what's your service level agreement. When the customer comes to, comes to you, they have, uh, for when I was doing this, we had a catalog of product, a catalog of things that we can do with the marketing cloud. Easy campaign, uh, complex uh, journey campaign, uh, uh, just email send out, personalization, all those things. That was extreme. This list of product needs to be extremely when well defined, with very clear definitions, no interpretation possible within those uh, definitions. And then, for each of them, you have an SLA, service level agreement. This takes three days. But even within this, it takes three days from the moment you gave me the clear brief, the clear requirement. And for this, you need to prepare a template of requirement for all those products. And the customers have really to, to answer all those questions very thoroughly. If you have half of the information to build a campaign, the, the SLA doesn't start. You don't have all the information for, 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 for this. So, so that's why this is something that I really stressed out because we struggle a lot when we, uh, when we, uh, when we have the, uh, this. The, the customer just sent you an email with just a piece of information. Oh, okay, I sent you the, the email on that day and three days later I need to have my campaign. No, it doesn't, doesn't work like that, that way. It, were, it, will be, it will start when all the information uh, are gathered. Um, also, that uh, can be challenging to uh, when you have a bunch of people working on a bunch of campaigns to dynamically forecast the workload um, because some people might be struggling. Uh, they have sometimes uh, in, in you know in season in holiday season for for example in November um, you might have a lot of emails to to send. So you have to also forecast the seasonality. And uh, your customer has to, they have to give you the forecast. And sometimes you will have, again, you will have to say no because you don't have the, 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 the workload. And when they come up with something last minute, unfortunately, that might not be possible. Um, and, uh, and if, and I put POC here, uh, within those type of project, if they want to do something like, um, I don't know, a WhatsApp integration, and that wasn't planned in the instance before, for me, it shouldn't be part of the project. It should be part of a side project on a proof of concept. You do the implementation of, let's say, mobile studio, for example. And when it's ready, OK, you can add sending SMS to, uh, to, to customers on the, on the product catalog. All right. Um, just uh, again. Um, just like I said at the beginning, when you're reaching the end of the project, sometimes the, the customers get a little bit more stressed out because they know you're going to go away. 
and they feel they are not ready to handle the marketing cloud, that, so they ask you a bunch of different things. Things that I would say to, uh, to consider is to start with the documentation very early. Also, um, when you start the project, be very precise on what level of documentation you're going to provide. For example, some customers, they, uh, that, that happened to me already. Usually what we did was just we just describe uh, what we did. And the customer wanted to have a little bit more details on how we did it and why we did it. So that was a totally different types of documentation. And you need to be very clear in pre-sales or at least at the beginning of the project on what you're, you're going to be, uh, you're gonna be de delivering. Um, and that's something that needs to start, to, uh, to, something that needs to be planned ahead and also to, to start early. Um, so, uh, the other thing is, and that is, that is something that happened to me this week, actually. I'm in, I'm in there right now. When you do your, 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 your testing, involve the customer and also document what, what, what you're doing. I just give you an example that happened to me this week. Um, Mike, uh, my colleague, he did, the, he did the journey and he did a decision split on two fields. And he was smart enough to document everything and to say, and to confirm with the customer to send an email. Those are the fields that I used for the, uh, for the, for the, uh, for the decision split. And right now the customers a few, a few months back comes, uh, comes back and say, oh, the journey doesn't work. You didn't configure it properly. And then when we looked at the journey, we uh, realized that the two fields that were uh, actually mentioned to, uh, to configure the journey were not actually good, or one of them was too, too restrictive. And since my colleagues do well documented what he did, we could say, OK, look, you just actually uh, followed your, uh, your recommendations, your requirement. And so, so that's why it's important when you're doing those kind of things to also document everything you're, you're, you're doing and to get validation from, uh, from, from, from the customers and to document those, uh, those uh, validation. Uh, concerning the training, it's also a tricky, a tricky part. And what I tend to do, because it's super overwhelming for, for certain customers, I try to disseminate the information throughout the project. For example, just at the beginning of the project, if I see the customer is a little bit green with the marketing cloud, I will send some trade ahead, ahead just so they can prepare them. They can prepare themselves for the training sessions because otherwise sometimes it's too much information. They are overwhelmed and they are not following and it's, it's not, it's not working properly for the, for the handover. Do you have, have any, any questions before I go to my last uh, slide? Yeah, I have uh, like uh... So, like, can can you after this uh, session, can you share this PPT and like a uh, uh, reference document of, of something like uh, which you do in like time you take for the email studio setup, time you take for the journey builder setup, a reference idea? Mm. But what will do? Yeah, well, I can yeah. share some some insight, but to, to be honest with you, I I don't know if I'm gonna share. Um, it's really my interpretation, and I'm I wouldn't say it's. Uh, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, but but I will share definitely. I will sh definitely Xavier. share the, the presentation. Xavier, when we finish, um, when we've recorded this and we publish this event, we'll put it up on the blog. Um, and anything that you'd like to add to that, um, just add to the blog um, in terms of attachments or recipes or documentation that you're able or want to share, um, and that'll be the best place to find it. Um, and just to sign up to that blog, it's um www.sfmcdg.org. We put all their previous events there with this sort of information. So what you can share, Xavier, would be great. And um, we'll put that information there after the meeting. Well, I, I will see what I can come up with. Maybe I can, I can, I can do something that you can share on the, on the blog. I would be willing to, uh, to do something that you guys can work with and, uh, and adjust to, to, uh, to your liking. Yeah, great, great, thanks. Um, just the final words on the, you know, building trust within the team. Um, I'm all for it as having fun. Honestly, I know that sometimes my manager didn't like it when we had the daily. Um, you, usually we liked to, and I still do it with my team, to fool around, to mess around, like just for one minute or two. 
uh, during the day is just to just to, uh, to have a little bit of hair and to have a little bit of fun. That's that's good for the for the team spirit. For one day, for example, I came up with these guys. Uh, you know uh, those kind of things. You know, just uh, just a little bit of fun, and uh, that that really makes a uh, makes a difference. What I would say to developers um, is, guys um, and girls, uh, speak up when 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 you're overwhelmed, when you have too much, when the customers is actually hitting you directly and going through you directly. Just speak up. Tell the the project man manager. So we can actually plan things ahead and find and find um, uh, countermeasure to to help you guys. Uh, very often I've seen developers just waited for for the last moment to to tell, and it's, sometimes it's not too late, but uh, it's 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 harder to or more difficult to uh, to to handle. And it's fine if you're overwhelmed. If you have questions, it's fine. We it's. The project manager needs to be open, not judgmental, and to just always to be in a mindset to to find solutions. That's 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 key, and that's why you know in the the next two points, it's 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 also important for it's super important for the project manager, but also for the for the development team. Don't be personal uh, when when you know something goes wrong. Um, you know, pointing fingers doesn't work too much, but. But sometimes it happens, and the, and if if it happens, don't don't take it personal. That's fine. Just discuss it, go through it, try really try to understand the the point of view, try to understand the development point of view because it's complex, because you don't have all the information, because the customer doesn't give you the clear uh, clear uh, requirements, and as a PM, you have to get this, you have to go to get this information. The, and then uh, on the PM uh, on the PM side, what's important uh, is the fact that sometimes, yeah, if it's you de you're dealing with people, and uh, it's not necessarily always um, always uh, easy and straightforward, and it's not like a, a field on journey builder, or you know, uh, yes or no. No, it's always always in the gray area. So that's why it's important to understand uh, everybody's uh, point of view. And I will finish my uh, my presentation. Thank you, guys. Do you, you. have any uh, any last Thank questions? I'm sorry, just a Thank few minutes. Thank you so uh, much. We're actually over time. I actually messaged Lakshmi to ask if she wanted to wrap up. <laughs> she hasn't responded, so I'll wrap up. Um, this has been truly wonderful. And um, I think we need to do it with some more PMs just to understand your brain because um, it's good to get it good to get that other point of view and um and, and find out how pm thinks um you said documentation as you go i think that's just so important but the big question is um and i know other pms that have done this when are you going to go and get your first um, marketing cloud cert so i'm sorry i didn't hear your question i i um that was question. the most important question of all. Uh, I know other PMs that have done this. Um, when are you going to go and get your first marketing cloud cert, Xavier? Uh, first marketing, marketing cloud certification, you mean? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, when are you going to get your first one? Oh, I, I do have a yeah. certification. Oh, which, uh, ones have you got? which ones have you got? I've got, um, I've got the email, email specialist, uh, admin, uh, consultant, uh, I just uh, the only the, the only one that I don't have and that what I'm working on right now and that's why I'm participating to the group is the developer, but but I feel even for a project manager I feel it's important to understand you guys to understand what you're living with what you're doing to uh, to get this uh, this certification. Not that that I want to become a, a coder tomorrow morning, but but I want I want to have this this understanding. Awesome. I didn't know you had the certs. Well done. Oh, actually, Matt, I think with seniority or experience in Marketing Cloud, he has become a project manager, not with project management experience. Am I correct, Xavier? Yeah. Yes. He's a technical one. <laughs> yeah. And so everyone's no, it's it's, it, 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 it's 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 super important to have technical knowledge, even as a project manager. Not, not that you 
you, you are the one who, who will come up with the, um, uh, with the solution. But even when you are reorganizing the, the timeline, for example, I give you an example that I just shared with you earlier. You know, the, the, the project that I told you about where uh, the, 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 the company had very strict uh, um, uh, security measure, I had to reorganize the timeline. Because I was, I was, I, I knew the team, the, I knew the, um, the the tool very, like very much in detail. I was able to see the dependencies on the on the different tasks, and I was able to reshuffle the, the 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 timeline based on the security measure that we had, and also the 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 the, the technical feasibility. And um, of course, I had to. To, to check with my team, to double check, but I did 90% of the work myself and I just needed a validation. And I was able to do this because, because it's important to, to know the, the, techni the technical side of uh, things. Do you think, um, Xavier, do you think um, being a PM, and I think you mentioned before, you're also a practice manager. Now, these are pathways, aren't they? So you start off as tech, dev, um, and you can, this can be a pathway. I don't. I don't know the pass. The uh, the, the the pathway. Yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, the, the 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 my path has been, hasn't been straightforward. There uh -huh. is a lot of uh, you know uh, turns and um, but I think um, I think I, I think it depends on the. Um, on, on, on you, I, I think it depends on what you what you like to, to do. I think it you can be a technical person, start with uh, being a tech lead, but but um, to be a practice lead, it's also important to, to have the the people side of it, uh, to be um, to be uh, willing to to share your knowledge and to have the the, the patience, the, the 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 great marketing cloud. Uh, brain that I know, sometimes for them, they don't explain things because for them it's obvious. So they don't take the time to explain things. They, how come you don't understand that? They don't take the time to exp exp uh, explain the step because it's obvious. But um, but then um, then I would say you can come from a technical background or from a more PMing or business background, but it just depends on your mindset. On your mindset, if you are ready to. Um, uh, to to put yourself at at your at uh, your colleagues level or at your customers level and to explain things that's 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 the key uh, when you're doing this this kind of work because it's uh, when you are a practice lead at least right now in my team my challenge is to to have more people certified in a very short time frame and to to do a ramp up with uh, with the team so we can we can take uh, we can take more more project so actually the the human part of it will be uh, technical part of it will be important too uh, but human that, that will be critical too it's it's always a balance be, be, between the two so to understand your question i'm not uh, there is not one pathway but it, the, for, for me i think uh, the the human side of it is important but i'm that's just my experience. I mean, uh, yeah, it is different for individual. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks again. Right. Thanks, Xavier. And um, I think we should Thank wrap the hour over. But um, yeah. thanks so much. I think we should Thank have you, uh, more sessions from you, Xavier. Uh, you're welcome. I uh, really enjoyed it. We really enjoyed the, the, the question. Uh, that was uh, that was good. It's a good way of you know challenging yourself, trying to. Uh, rethink what you're doing, um, you know. So it's it's great. It's been uh, it's it's been great, guys. Thank you for the opportunity. Really appreciate it. We should. I, I, um, yeah. I know the documentation you brought that up. That's another good thing to talk about. I can imagine some other PMs that we should get on um, to do sessions like this. And also, Brett, um, Brent, let's get in contact and let's talk about um, those experiences you've got and how we might be able to share those. I know we've got yeah. an event that we're planning, I think more in the early new year, 
about different platforms. Um, but let's just get you into that conversation because I think it was Blaze. It could be a good um, good thing to sort of get into the mix and um, just compare. Sure, I know there's a lot of chatter about Brace at the moment. Yeah, if you want to have a chat about that one, that's fine. Not a problem. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone for joining. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Take care. Yeah. Thanks all. Thanks, Olivia.